Oh, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us uh, here today. Um, I have the pleasure to be with our CIO, Penelope Brett, and uh, with David Weisman, head of uh, the commercial, uh, corporate development for RISE with SAP. And my name is Robert Wickel. I'm looking after our global SAP S4 and SAP Cloud business that we are um, doing together. So we are here, and I hope you enjoyed the keynote this morning, um, seeing our CEO, Julie Sweet, and Christian talking about, uh, amongst other things, our RISE collaboration. And we're here today to bring to life a little bit um, how Accenture's journey in the cloud actually looks like and how our collaboration with SAP is actually supporting our um, journey. But let me start with a little reality buster. I mean, when we were starting that discussion kind of 12 months ago, um, Penelope, you told me, Robert, I think you are missing the point. And um, to be precise, she said, you are completely missing the point. So I felt, okay, that's not a very good discussion starter um, <laughs> to then to talk about RISE. And what you said is, in order to make it work for me, RISE needs to be more than RISE. And if you look at the facts, Accenture is a large enterprise, like many of you work in. We have specific challenges as it relates to talking about or executing a transformation of our ERP domain with SAP at the core. We are in a state of hybrid and multi-cloud on infrastructure and application level with an increasing share of cloud native and multi-tenant SaaS products, which need to be kept in sync from an innovation perspective, from an upgrade perspective and all that. So that already is complex part of the journey. We sit on an architecture designed a couple of years back for a company which we had in mind would be Accenture in the 20s. Now, we would not have thought, at this point in time, we were thinking about, okay, how would a 500,000 people company look like? We didn't know. Today, it's 700,000 people. Um, we would not have imagined that we are the largest digital agency on planet Earth, which now is Accenture Song. Um, and we would not have imagined that we actually buy, on average, a company per week globally that needs to be integrated at speed. So the architecture that we are talking today is actually not really fit for purpose for what Accenture is today, and even less so for what Accenture will um, aspire to become. And then last but not least, um, we were all facing, I think, the same challenges from an operations perspective over the last two years with unforeseeable events right, that nobody could have predicted. So Penelope, really, I don't want to be in your shoes, to be honest, right, <laughs> in dealing with all that complexity. So how do you look at that discussion how RISE can support you right, in your objectives as CIO and how you, how you look at, at Accenture's transformation. So as we talk about this whole journey, there's actually two distinct pieces to it. Let me focus on the first part, which is the RISE journey. Um, I'm a CIO. I don't know how many CIOs we have in the audience, but we are inundated every day with the concept of compressed transformation, right? What worked for us before COVID, it doesn't work anymore. Business is turning over and changing at a rate that is infinitely faster than it was four or five years ago. So when we think about the things that I as a CIO on behalf of my company, who, as you mentioned, north of 20% growth, right? 700,000 people banging on my technology landscape every day, acquiring a company a week, diversifying our business lines, manufacturing products. When I started with Accenture 30 years ago, that was not a conversation we were having about what we were gonna be when we grew up. So we have to think about how to set up a technology landscape that allows us to do a couple of things. Number one, operate securely in the cloud, distributed data seamlessly at a reasonable cost profile, but also that allows us to stay on the latest wave of the technology without a lot of intensive effort on the part of my shop. Because where I want my team to focus, and I see Eli Lambert, my uh, lead for this area, um, where I want my team to focus with their highly specialized, deeply developed skills in how our business sits on SAP, I want them focused on that business transformation, continually reinventing how we run our individual processes both in silos, but also as a cohesive whole business to propel the next wave of Accenture growth. So when I think about the rise part of this proposition, for me it is being in the cloud, being continually current, being in a security framework, which I'm sure you will talk about in a minute, right? 
um, and being able to draw on SAP continually to make sure that I am staying constant with the market in terms of both security framework and functional technology that's being offered to me. So that's the first part. Okay. Now, um, if you look at the transformational part, so where to go to, right? So we as Accenture, we have a framework called SOAR that we actually um, offer to our clients and also we started discussing with you how could SOAR help. So what's your perspective actually on the North Star? So where so do you want to move that shop to? This is where it really gets interesting, I think, for all of us because my company is no different than your companies. We're being asked to constantly reinvent ourselves. And the only thing we know for certain is that what we're going to need for our companies to achieve the next wave of growth and capture the next real tranche of market share that we don't currently possess is to do something completely different, whether it's adjacent or completely non-adjacent to the business we run today. So when I think about the SOAR journey, what that is giving us an opportunity to do is to re-examine ourselves. We think of ourselves as a good company, even a great company, right? The greater than logo is in our brand in terms of how you combine human ingenuity and technology to drive continual change and transformation across the globe. But coming up with practical ways to do that that doesn't disrupt the business growth patterns is very challenging. And that's part of what we're able to do with this SOAR journey that I also think David's going to talk about in a minute. We are, we are looking inside the actual running of our business, area by area, process by process. I'll give you a very specific example. We close our global books in five days. How do you beat that? Ah, now what if we can introduce predictive analytics based on not only our own data patterns, which we're building internally, but purchase data patterns from market about socioeconomic conditions in every corner of the globe to help predict what's going to happen in the next closing of the books and get out in front of that. So it's how do you step from where you are to what the next wave is going to be to enable that company growth. And the SOAR process causes you to step very rigorously through all of the things you do with that mindset of how can we change and how can we more fully embrace the current cloud capabilities to take you to that completely new level of business performance. Okay. Before we talk about the rise, for just one question, Penelope, on, on culture. So you talk about change. If you talk with our finance colleagues, right, and with KC, our CFO, how, they, how do they look at this journey? Because effectively, they need to do something different tomorrow and work differently compared to today. So what's the state of discussion? Well, we are very fortunate, I think, Robert, both of us, to work for a professional services company. And part of our job is to analyze the market, understand what our clients need, and bring that forward. And so our own understanding of where the world is going, how it impacts us, but more importantly, how it impacts a very broad base of companies around the world, it keeps us constantly in the churning mindset, ooh, could I use that at home? Ooh, what can I do with that, right? So I count myself among a very few and very fortunate CIOs to pair with business partners who are willing completely to embrace the change with me. What they do demand that I don't think is any different than what all of you have to do to answer your business constituents is I have to lay out a risk pattern for how we adopt those changes that does not disrupt market growth, particularly now when share is out there to be captured, right? We have to have seamless integration of the new capabilities while maintaining the old ones and continuing to power our business. So in talking with our CFO, Casey McClure, the conversation is not about should we, it is how will we get there without interrupting today's business? What is the pattern of adoption we're going to use, which is becoming uncovered to us through the SOAR process and the analysis we're doing in conjunction with SAP that allow us to get there, but not to in any way impede what KC is doing now? Okay. Thank you. Now, David, um, Penelope started with a couple of challenges a year back, right? So with, we are missing the point and we need rice to be more than rice. So how did this collaboration inform your perspective on the rise? I had to laugh a little bit when you said missing the point because um, I remember when we were talking to Penelope about why rise, she said, what's the value prop? Team hands me a deck, it's like 38 slides of every possible outcome of what we could do for her as a customer. And she says, but, but David, what, what's the value of Rise? Why would I want to do it? And I remember going back and thinking about, in a simple term, what does Rise really provide to our customers? And I like to think of it in two, two aspects, run versus build. On the run side, we allow you to offload your risk 
while providing you with cost certainty. And the way that we do that is through standardization and operational guidelines. And so when you think of some of those components, Penelope mentioned one of the very important ones is a common security framework, right? The framework is based on our security framework and best practices that SAP uses over all of our cloud properties. And so what that allows us to do is deliver a fully monitored solution that is hardened and scalable to thwart off any wide range of potential attacks. We're gonna take that risk on for you. Next, a standardized architecture. Together, SAP and Accenture have worked with thousands of different customers. We know quite a lot about how they operate their environments. Putting together a standardized reference architecture allows us to build a solution that's both scalable, but also maximizes uptime and provides our customers with a cost certainty. Adoption framework. You know, you heard Brian talk a little bit about that in his keynote earlier today. It's really a set of guidelines that helps outline the steps that you're going to need to take within your journey and the roles and responsibilities that the different parties are going to play as they go through that journey. And when you combine all those elements together, what it really comes down to is being able to provide a service level agreement that is based on uptime, right? And so we're able to provide a best in class SLA, and not only can we provide that SLA, but we're willing to stand behind it. If in the event that a system were to go down, we're willing to reimburse our customers based on the cloud subscriptions they pay uh, in the event that that goes down. And that's a lot different than what you'll get if you go to a SLA that's based at like an infrastructure level. We're able to bring that all the way up to the application level and ensure that your application will be up and running when you need it. So as Penelope said to me when I gave that presentation, those are, those are table stakes, right? That's moving to the cloud and that's what is important to move to the cloud and you're right. And so by offloading that run component, what you're able to do is now focus on the build component. So you offload your run onto Rise, and that's going to allow you to focus on SOAR and building out that transformation journey. And, and so why, why did we decide to do this together? And I think this idea, we probably started about eight months ago, it took a little while to get through building that. And we really said, what if we were to take the combined experience of SAP and the experience of Accenture and really design an offering that's built for our large enterprise customers? What would that look like and what unique capabilities do we have as organizations to deliver that? And so through that process, we were able to really come up with a framework that allows us to not only jointly participate in the transformation journey, but also participate in the operating of that environment. That's gonna provide our customers with both continuity as well as accountability. And I think that's really what this is about, is helping to ensure that success together for our customers. Your expectations against that new proposition? Penelope. So are we on the right track with that? Yes. Um, I will say that one of the things that's been great about working with SAP is those expectations, as we talked about at the start, right? And that phrase is going to come back to haunt me for the rest of my career, I'm <laughs> sure, but table stakes. We know what good looks like in a SaaS model because that's a business that we both do all the time. What's important is what can you unlock on the part of large enterprises. Because for those of you like me who are CIO for a large enterprise, the challenges you have in marshalling workforce, bringing investment around to the right curve to put in the programming, moving other things off the plate without damaging other parts of your business, those challenges are infinitely more complex in the large enterprise than the smaller enterprise, which might be a bit more nimbler, a bit more streamlined in terms of it just hasn't grown as broad or to as global a footing. And so what I've loved about this process is being able to pair creatively with SAP to think about how we are going to help all of you as large enterprises solve these same challenges. So I am doing it first. We're going to learn from that process and see how we can streamline the experiences we hope all of you have uh, on the same journey. So the combined model, David. Rise by SOAR for large enterprise. So how does that work for it? So, so actually, I, I got to give you a small correction, right? We talked a lot about Rise plus SOAR, and when we, I remember spending time with the branding teams talking about how we're going to name the solution. And we said, well, Rise plus SOAR doesn't actually accurately reflect what we're doing. We need to replace the plus with the multiplication side, right? It's Rise times SOAR. And really, to us, it's about amplifying that value. I think when you combine the expertise of both organizations, it's about understanding where your customers ultimately want to land, right? So your landing position and your starting position were two 
very different ones than we often see. I don't know if you want to talk briefly about, when we talked to you, you started in the public cloud infrastructure and you were already heavily down the path of cloud, but where you ultimately want to be is somewhere completely different. I don't know if you want to comment briefly on that. Yeah, just one clarification, right? Um, what I want from my company, given how far advanced we are in our cloud position, we, are, we have every piece of real estate we're ever going to put in the cloud, in the cloud. And now what I have to do is help my company along the journey from being in the cloud to consuming cloud capabilities. It's an entirely different mindset, just two words, but it's an entirely different mindset in how you approach partnerships, what you want to drive in terms of, of business outcomes and business transformation, riding on top of the cloud. So I want to consume from my SaaS partner the full stack. I do not need to spend my time watching what you're going to do on the infrastructure layer. And right now, even though I am in a public cloud, I run my own instance, it's my problem. And so what I want to do is offload those things to you because you'll have an industrialized business of it. And I want to focus with Eli and my team on how to take the business to greater heights. And for those of you who have to run IT workforces, acquiring the talent capable of doing that is a very tough slog. And when you get it, you want to preserve it. And once you get the talent, one of the best ways to preserve that talent is to continually put them on innovation, on change, on looking to the future, rotating to the next set of tech that SAP is going to bring us. And I think my team has responded beautifully to that and the feedback from them about getting to take this direction with their job as we give these other capabilities to SAP has been really positive for Eli and I. Yeah. Thank you for providing that perspective. And I think that the next step we are going is to look at it also from, and you heard a lot about it today, about from a sustainability perspective, how we can support actually with rise times so for large enterprise from that end, how we look at it from a diversity perspective and how we can expand it to really talk to the 360 degree value creation that we need in order to unfold actually um, the value potential that sits on an SAP future, future SAP, run on rise with SAP, right? And uh, supported by SOAR with Accenture. Mm -hmm. So with that, thank you both for being here with me today. And uh, if there are any questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay.